Couldn't hear you, Rodney. Are we waiting for somebody? I thought we was waiting for Jeff. I thought he said, hold on a minute. He was stepping away, if I'm not mistaken. He's here. He's here. Oh, okay. Okay. I apologize. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. All right. Uh, allow me to introduce myself first. My name is Rodney March. I'm uh, with Rock the Community. And uh, I'll give you a little, uh, for those of you who don't know about us or what we do, uh, Rock the Community has been around for about 10 years. We uh, started in the St. Louis area. Uh, our whole goal was to work with police departments and help them integrate into the communities that they serve and help with uh, crime prevention. We brought that program here to uh, the Columbia area, and I had the distinct pleasure of working with Jeff and with Mike Griggs on a different capacity, uh, doing community events, uh, integrating the community with uh, with the police department and stuff like that, and it seemed to work pretty good. Uh, right now, we have a different kind of issue that's uh, really plaguing our communities. We have a lot of violence right now, and we really need to get try to get the get that in grips so that we can get it under control. Uh, earlier last week, I had a meeting with uh, Mike Hester and uh, Sergeant Sinclair about a couple of the programs that we wanted to implement in Columbia area. Uh, but I guess we're getting started. Maybe uh, one of the key things I would like to know from the city is what are some of uh, the goals that you have for the community uh, so that way we can try to align with what it is that you want and try to bring something uh, to help benefit everyone. Well, Rodney, I think my my biggest goal is is to find out from everyone exactly what they expect out of the city. And that's what DeCarlo was trying to do with all the groups that he was meeting with to try to get information from all the groups uh, so that we may address some of these concerns that, that everybody has in common and some that aren't in common. So that that is why we were doing what we were doing. Correct. Okay. And with that being said, uh, some of the things that we would need from the, from the city to implement some of the goals that we would like to do, uh, everything doesn't always have to be monetary. We always know that we need funding and stuff like that to move things, but we're in a crisis right now. So everything doesn't always have to be monetary. There are certain things that we could leverage from you guys right now to help get some of the programs that we want to do get started. For example, uh, building spaces. Uh, we've already talked with Mike Griggs. So there's places we can use uh, with C parks and rec to help uh, implement a de-escalation program that we're really interested in starting right now. Uh, also, Wi-Fi availability, uh, supplies and equipment, uh, help with safety patrol, stuff that, that we can do now that absolutely costs nothing that you guys already have so that we can implement the programs and get these things started because we have a crime is growing higher and higher every day. And if we don't get a control on it, it's not, it's, no amount of funding is gonna matter at any point. So we need to do things now that we can really get with you guys to start with some of this stuff. So what I'd tell you, Rodney, is, is DeCarlin and I met with uh, Tyree Bindham last week and his group about the same thing. And, and they're, they're wanting to do the same type of stuff. So, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, groups and individuals out there wanting to do the same thing. So just, just wanted to let you know, you're not the first to reach out to us, but uh, we're, we're definitely discussing it with everybody. And I understand that. And, uh, and I'm glad because we need, we need, it's not a just single person problem. We need everyone working toward it. If we want, if we want to uh, help solve it, we don't want to be the, we're not looking to be the, the sole provider. We're looking to be one of the providers to help. Uh, we really deeply care about the community and want to be a part of it and help in any capacity that we can. So, yeah, we're not, we're definitely looking to, to partner with as many people as possible to help with this pandemic. Rodney? Yes. I'm Stephanie Brown. Hey, Stephanie. How are you? Good, thanks. So since, I'm, since I've been all consumed with all things pandemic, can you tell me a little bit about what kind of programs you're wanting to do? Well, what we would like to implement is what we would call a de-escalation and resource hub. Uh, that way we get things directly to the people in real time. I think some of the things that's uh, causing a lot of the uh, violence right now is people are just 
don't have resources. They don't have the things that they need to live a sustainable life. And so that, of course, we all know causes a lot of crime. Uh, if we can implement some of these de-escalation hubs, we can get into the community and start working with people that are actually having some of these major issues and problems where right now we think we'll, we're not gonna say we think, we know that there's a disconnect between the police department, the city and the community, okay? I think that we have the leverage of being able to come into the community and actually talk to these people and find out who's having issues with who, who's beefing, who's fighting, who's looking to hurt who. We try to de-escalate these things, you know what I'm saying? And if we can't de-escalate them, then we, we already have enough information to pass along to the police department. Like, hey, these are the people that are involved in these situations. This was going on. We think that it's going, it's beyond our capacity to help. There's going to be something maybe violent that's going to happen. Okay, thank you. Is that modeled after something, Rodney, or is it just kind of a grassroots startup? No, it's kind of modeled after something. It's, uh, I worked on the project uh, in St. Louis with Better Family Life and James Clark. We helped implement, the, uh, implement that, and it actually worked really good. We actually helped save uh, maybe about 75 lives in a two-year period. Which police department were you working with in St. Louis? St. Louis City, St. Louis County, uh, pretty much all the police departments. Uh, we did our Rock the Community events in every uh, place. Our One of our main goals was always to implement the police department uh, into the community. So that was one of our main focuses. Uh, we really got off, into, after crime got really bad, we started implementing different programs to try to help, you know, curve some of that violence. And for example, and that was the de-escalation hub. But yeah, we worked with uh, St. Louis City, St. Louis County, uh, North County Police Department. So who could we contact to, to, to find out about what, what worked there? Who could uh, we talk to at St. Louis Police? Uh, I can connect you with, uh, with a couple of people. I'll, I'll send those over to you, the names. Uh, we can, I can connect you with Wesley Bell. Uh, uh, Lewis Reed, I can connect you with a few people that we were working with to show you exactly what was going on and how it worked. I'll send you those personally, Mr. Glasscock. Thank you. Uh -huh. Working with Wesley before he became a prosecutor? I, I'm sorry. With, with, uh, you said you worked with Wesley Bell. Was that before yeah, he became a prosecutor? I, I, that was before he became a prosecutor. I was working with him. I actually worked with him while he was a prosecutor, but uh, when he was a, a city councilman in Ferguson, I was working with him, uh, and then after he became a uh, after he became a prosecutor, we started implementing programs where we would do uh, back to school drives, community events, and stuff like that. Uh, we started helping him uh, implement the prosecutor's office. Uh, he wanted the prosecutor's office to have a better relationship with the community, so we were we helped him uh, do that. Okay. Yeah, so I worked with him in both phases as a councilman and, and as a city as a county prosecutor. One of the needs that I see, Rodney, is there has to be some type of interruption, whether that's community run or police community relationship, which is probably most um, effective because there's you can have an MOU for information sharing and get people cleared for CGIS, the um, the requirements to be able to share criminal justice information, but right. what we're seeing is in there's a couple different programs. Grid is one of those. Um, Ceasefire, which has morphed into different things, correct? Are, have been around long enough to where they've had some measures in place, um, mm -hmm. but we know that the victims today are going to be our suspects tomorrow in shootings. And right now we are ineffective at dealing with that from a community standpoint. And I, I just think that that's measurable that we can do that showing that it's working. Um, mm -hmm. and, but that's a piece that we have to have. Right. And, and I totally agree. And I think that, you know, 
if we integrated what we had together, uh, we have a great relationship in the community. And so I think we're able to get in places that maybe you guys aren't able to get in to really get access to what's really going on. I think that we have we've, we've built the trust factor with the community. People will talk to us uh, and and listen to what we have to say, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? We can start getting to some of the we're not going to be able to solve everything, but we can really get, I think, a bulk of things under control. We do one. I would I would like to try to do it in phases. We do the we start with the worst area and integrate a hub and start doing things and phase it out to the other two areas. That way we can have the data, we can have what we need to see, what worked, what didn't work, and what we need to do, and then we transfer it to the next place. So one of the challenges that you'll have with that is there's not a single place at this point. This is people-centric. Columbia is small enough to where that you can't focus on a problem area. You have to focus on the people who are involved in the activity. Okay. Um, and then that's something that we could do then. Say that again, Jeff. I'm sorry. What, say that again, what you just said. So used to be a time where you could say that most of the shootings were in central Columbia. And then there was a time that you could say the shootings were in northeast Columbia. That's not the case anymore. Um, Correct, it's everywhere. One area that you can focus on, you have to focus on the people involved. And you know probably better than anybody else on this call that it's the same people or their associates over and over and over again, who are either the victims or the suspects in these shootings. And it really has to be focusing on people instead of places, because there's not one area of town that you can focus on long term. You can you can focus on a short term problem in an area, but mm -hmm. that that you can't focus on an area long term and that problem not move somewhere else because of the people involved. And, and that makes sense. And I think that overall, that's not our overall goal to do long term there, to get into a place, hit it hard and find out who the problem people are. Start, you know, getting really into the community, finding out where our major problems are. So you're absolutely right. We can't focus so much on one single community versus as we need to focus on people. But we need to be able to start somewhere so that we can find the people that that we need to be able to have into into this so we can start saying like hey these are the problem people i'm not looking for to set up a hub long term now but we are looking to at least be able to provide different resources to those communities to try to help deter some of that crime and catch some of these youth before they start going to that path so what you say makes absolutely excellent sense but we yes i totally agree we need to focus on people and finding out who are the problem people and getting the community to help us point those out so that we can start integrating that to you guys or at least trying to de-escalate their situations, finding out, hey, why why does Johnny have a problem with, with Bobby? What's the issue? What can we do to to make to have you stop chasing Bobby around town shooting at? What is it that we that we need to help you get? Are you asking me, Chad, or are you asking Rodney? Okay. It, on our level, I don't know that the federal government's pushing anything that we are reacting to a lot. And um, the task force has been successful in preempting some stuff with the intelligence gathering that's happening at that level but at the community level there are a couple people on this call who could sit here and list people that we know 
are likely to be involved in a shooting tomorrow, either as a suspect or victim. And we don't have any outreach programs that are funded in place, vetted, validated, that can deter that at a community level. Nothing that is effective that I've seen. What I don't wanna do is get into, and, and I'm just being frank with everybody on this call, I don't wanna get into a situation where we're just throwing something at a problem, having no idea whether it's gonna work. And I've gone down, personally have gone down a couple rabbit holes trying to find programs that would work here. Um, and the reality is, is there's, uh, there's some larger programs in very large areas that have shown some success, but the funding levels for that, in my, my own opinion, there are so many pieces to that <clears throat> that are funded at such a high level that they're seeing the success. I don't know if it would work here. I'm not saying it won't, um, but I can't be the only person evaluating that. I'm sure other people are doing that, but I have seen no help from that other than to ask me what I'm doing. And I'm doing research, but I keep falling short of something that'll work here. So I'm looking for help to find something that will work here that is validated, vetted, and we're not just throwing people at a problem or money at a problem not knowing if it's going to work, not having a structured, well thought out plan. Um, I think for me, that stuff needs to happen so that there's not, everybody's on the same page. The police, the community, the funding sources, all that stuff have to be on the same page for something like this to work. And I think what Rodney's saying is he has some ideas. Um, I'm just, I'm asking kind of where those ideas are born and how they're vetted and validated because those are all important to me. For whatever small piece I play in this, that's important to me personally. And, and our and information that I have, uh, it's a program that we've actually seen work. So it's not something, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm trying to bring something that I actually know has worked because I totally agree. With things that are going on right now, we don't really have time to be wondering if it uh, will work, this, that, and the other. What we do know for sure is whatever we are doing right now definitely isn't working. So we have to put something together that is going to work. We don't have time to try to figure out some new stuff. Let's do something that we know actually has some kind of results. So I agree with what you're saying. Uh, because we don't have time. We don't want to see not nobody else lose their life. And, and I'll tell you, Rodney, that we have had some success on the enforcement side of this, putting resources toward trying to find the people who are responsible and hold them accountable. And our clearance rates are way higher. So we are having some success on that side, but it's only one side of the equation. Yeah, and so that's good. And I don't want to lose that because those two sides have to interact with each other. And I'm, I'm not saying that whatever the community does, it, turns people into snitches or anything like that. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is we have to recognize the successes that we do have and not inadvertently cut those off to where we have less success in that area. And, and some of these programs have done that. So we have and, to be mindful of that. As well. and, and that's where I think a strong partnership comes from. We want to know what's working so that we can continue to do that and help and help with that flow. Uh, I think we have enough organizations that are here in the Columbia area that we could integrate and really help with what you already, just what you said, that you already have not success at. So if you have a 10% a uh, success rate at what you're doing now, I think with the capacity that we can bring, let's say now we take that up to a 30% success rate. And in a year, we have a 60% success rate. But I guess that would be, that's, and that's totally, you know, you guys, if you want, if you want someone, if you're looking for some to partner with someone to get the help out in the community, we don't want to take away from anything that is working right now. All we would want to do is maybe add to it and figure out or figure out how we can add to it to make it successful for everyone.
Any questions? <laughs> I can't think of any right now, Rodney. I, I'd have to talk with Jeff and DeCarlin and and uh, Stephanie to see where we go from here. So, okay, that sounds good. And like I said once again, I don't want it to be, uh, I don't, I don't want it to be just one person. You know, we want to work and do any and everything we can. And we don't, we don't want it to. We know everyone needs funding or money to, to do things. I don't want us helping the community to be about money. I want us helping the community to be about them being in need right now. Let's leverage the resources that we already have, things that we can do now, and, and go ahead and start moving forward with whatever plan that works. If, if Jeff has something that he's working on, maybe he can integrate a couple of different organizations with him, and we leverage the uh, resources that the city already have or that everyone in, in that group has and try to go ahead and come up with a great plan to go ahead and start stopping some of this violence. I guarantee you by the time it's warm, it's probably going to get people off control if you don't get a grip now. It'll be before it gets warm. It's going to be before it gets warm. And I'm, and, and I'm not telling you something I'm guessing at. Okay, I'm telling you something that I've seen and witnessed for myself because I've already lived through it through the St. Louis area. I've seen it happen and how it's escalated. And I'm telling you, it's escalating the exact same way in Columbia right now. A lot of it is generational. By summertime, it'll be so far out of control that we won't be able to control it. All we'll be doing is running around and, and locking everybody up. And I'm sure that's not exactly what Jeff wants. You know what I'm saying? I want, he wants to be able to you know have people in the community not committing these crimes not we don't want to be picking up bodies every day at all does anyone uh, is there any feedback or anyone has anything to say rodney have you um talked at all to boone county uh i have i want to I guess maybe I should ask what part of Boone County are you asking? Because I have talked to Boone County. I want to make sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, like the Children's Services Board. Um, uh, yes, I, yes, I have. Okay. Because we also applied for uh, the new block grant that's out right now to help provide basic needs. And, and we're applying for the youth initiative grant as well. Okay, good. We have spoken to her. So yes, we're, we are trying to leverage uh, different resources so that we can help bring funding to the table to help do things. Uh, and I'm gonna be quite honest with you, whether we get funded or not, my whole goal is to try to save as many people as I can. I mean, I'm not gonna let money stand in the way of me trying to save someone's life, or it doesn't take money to come out and do some of the things that we actually need to do. Yes, some of these infrastructures structures need that type of funding, but we have the capacity to start things right now to get things rolling so that later we can figure out how and where we will get the funds from. When when you were talking earlier, you said that you needed things like supplies and equipment. Um, like, right. give examples of like what kind of supplies? Uh, office supplies, uh, uh, paper, uh, notebooks, tables, chairs. Uh, we would like, uh, like Wi-Fi access or uh, computers. Uh, we can uh, get people to come in and help apply for jobs, et cetera. Okay. Uh, places where we could, a lot, one of the things that I've been working with Mike Griggs on is a lot of the, uh, a lot of the youth in the community, you know, they don't, they say, they claim they don't have too much to do, that they want different programming. They want things to do. So we're working with Mike Griggs to try to get in some of the community centers to help with some new plans. Uh, uh, we, we were talking about uh, applying or trying to get some coding classes for kids. We want to do everything possible to try to catch them at a young age so that they don't get to the point to where they're at the age where we know they're about to commit a crime. It's just so we know we got people that's going to be commit a crime or be a victim. We want to prevent them from doing that. We want to give them every available opportunity and resource to try to help save them. And that's not a, a my problem, you guys' problem. It's like everyone's problem. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not a black thing, a white thing. This is a everybody's thing. We need people need help. And we need to be, we are, we are all responsible for trying to help them. You know, and we are more than capable of doing it. 
the problem is we have to figure out how we can work together to do it. Everybody, everybody is always saying, well, this needs to be done, that needs to be done, we'll talk about it later. We all, we have a lot of talks and things, but nothing, nothing seems to be getting done, and people are dying. And I don't I don't want to, I don't, I believe in this city wholeheartedly, and I don't believe that that the city would want to see this many, this much crime and things going on without trying to implement something and saying, hey, we got to do something different. Because apparently whatever any of us are doing hasn't seemed to be, be working too well. Us so, included. So that's why we want to start because we, we need to do more as well. So what would help me, Rodney, and I'm, I can't speak for everybody else here, what would help me is some document that shows goals, objectives, you know, what's the mission? What are the goals and objectives? What's the structure? Um, what different things are affecting what goals or objectives? That that kind of structure helps me. I'll send um, you about a strategic plan so that you have that. That would be helpful for me. I'll, I'll email that to you when we get off the phone, Jeff, okay? So that you have a whole structure of what it is that we have a whole five-year outlook, and I'll give you that so you can see exactly where we where we're trying to do and where we anticipate on being. Yeah. Can you just send it to the group so everybody has it? Yeah, I'll send it to the group. All right, so when you talk about Wi-Fi resources, what are you specifically talking about? How do I deliver that? Well, all of our premises have guest Wi-Fi. Anybody can come in our building and get on it. Mm -hmm. And we're working toward that, yes, sir. Right. 
right. So, Mr. Glasgow, maybe uh, with in answering your question, maybe if you guys could provide some uh, hot spots that we could use around the city to help people, that would be that would be sufficient for now, you know, until we can get things put in place. I'll have to check into it. I mean, it, but I know we're building like the Molly Bowden Police Center. That should be open this summer. That'd be a place where I would start, you know, have some kind of services. Uh, you know, where would that location be at? It's North Columbia, up there uh, on the, in the Auburn Hills area. Oh, so that's okay. That's what that's going to be named right there behind by Center Point Hospital. Yeah. Will there be space for? If there was going to be a hub there, because that area, I used to live in that area. There's a community room is um, going to be in and there. If that's, yeah, there's a community okay. room being built with it. That area needs that. Mm -hmm. That area needs that. That that area is, yeah, that's yeah. a whole nother story. I can write a small novel. So that's what I can tell you is where we're starting, basically. I mean in that area so you said a com okay. community room will yeah. will how what will it look like the access to the community how would that look like in that facility i'll let jeff describe it he knows more about it than i do but uh it should be open this summer shouldn't it jeff but can you elaborate really, jeff yeah it's a room it'll have um some it capability in it people can book the room not much uh -huh. than booking a room at the arc um it will have controlled access. We can't just open up a room and make. Of course, it. it should. It should always have supervision right. in there. Correct. Right. So, um, it would be, in my mind, it's going to be a lot like booking a room at the Ark. Um, well, I'm going to be honest with you, Jeff. That's not always easy to book a room at the Ark. I'll be honest with you. Um, yeah, it's another conversation. Yeah. Well, it, we when you talk about booking a room at the ARC, is it going to be free? Well, I'm not saying necessarily free. And see, that's what we have to understand, that people are not always looking for free. They're just looking for access. That's what I was um, thinking. That, that was yeah, they're looking for access, maybe at a lower at a lower rate of cost, because when you put a fee, a small fee, at least, people uh -huh. tend to be more accountable, more responsible. Um, yeah. We don't have all that ironed out yet, but the way I envision okay. it is something that people can sign up and get a room. Um, I hadn't really okay. cons considered a fee because everything that I've done up in that neighborhood with community outreach unit has um, tried to be either low or no cost to the people up there. Um, mm -hmm. Just because there are financial barriers up there that are pretty, you know, they're just pretty significant. Correct, Correct. there's significant barriers there, but uh, also, yeah, if that, that would be a room. So would it be a room that it would have space as if I wanted to go and teach um, some type of skills class, JRT class? Would it be that type of setup? I wouldn't see any reason you couldn't. I mean, we can configure the room however we okay. need to. It, okay. It's a room and the chairs okay. will be configurable and um, the IT infrastructure should be there. Right, as long as we're social distancing. At some of the expenses in that, we we can't fund, okay. we actually can't even fund the entire building and putting furniture in it yet, but we're looking at options for that. So um, the community room was one of the things that went into the original design based on the stuff that we were hearing through those listening tours and through community outreach unit up there. So mm -hmm. they had a lot of say in how that building was developed. Mm -hmm. Right. I like That's that. Good. Okay, so summary, do anybody else have any other questions or anything? And I guess uh, well, I would have a question. What would be our next step in, uh, in what you guys would like to see done from this group? Outside of me sending you the uh, strategic plan, Jeff. Well, I think the one thing that we're going to probably check into is who you give us in St. Louis and what you did down there and what 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 they asked you to do and what 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 happened. I mean, uh, okay. this is all kind of, you so, know, 
we're, we're getting, like I said, hit up by many groups about doing the same, you know, exact thing. And so that those we're going to have to wade through that. So, Mr. Glasscock, what it sounds like I'm hearing you say is that with the organizations that are coming with, with um, ideas of ways to work in collaboration um, with the city, police department, CPS, that you're looking for, you want to know what the outcomes are going to be, what the objectives, the goals and outcomes are going to be is what it sounds like you're asking for. Well, what I'm asking for is give me examples of places I can go talk to to see that number one, it was a positive and successful of what you're trying to do. Uh, right. So, you know, so I know what I'm buying into. And so right. I, that's what I'm looking for is, is success somewhere else. So I know what's going to happen. Uh, okay. And that's what everybody wants whenever they're, if they're investing, well, whether it be. And, and, and that's what I ask for from staff that I hire, where have you been and what have you done that you're going to help me here at the city of Columbia be successful? That makes sense. Um, and they should be able to tell you that they should be able to rattle that off in jobs that they've, they've done. Cause like right. I, I've done that for people, um, recently telling them things that I've done and they're like, Oh, I didn't know that you did that. I'm like, yeah, I work with this many families. My, the goal for the organization was 10 people and I got nine. So I could tell you what I did and ways to achieve those goals. So I get it. All right. Sounds good, guys. I'll start getting that information to you. Is there any other questions or anything that anyone else has? No, I don't have any, Rodney. Jeff? We'll meet with Rodney on Monday to review some of our, our park stuff and programming ideas. And just basically what we're doing is just kind of giving them the range of things that we're currently doing that we could partner with them on things that they can partner with us on, and then things that if we had any grants or funding that they could apply for that maybe help supplement to do that. So it's kind of that whole range of proposed ideas. So uh, really nothing's unturned in, in terms of what we're trying to do with, the, with, with them so far, so. And we really truly appreciate your help. Oh, more than welcome. Thank you for your help. Programming for teenagers is a toughest job in the world. So uh, any help you get would be great. So. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. it is. Now, Mr. Griggs, let me ask you, you guys are saying programming. Have you guys talked to a lot of youth? Have y'all brought youth in and did some surveys? Well, again, it's it's hard to do surveys for teenagers. You know, we, you know, we bring them in there. We have after school drop ins at the armory all the time. We've got kids doing it. In fact, uh, what we mentioned, like what Chad mentioned about the internet access, you know, we have the access there. Uh, mm -hmm. We're looking at how we can put up maybe a Wi-Fi repeater on the outside of the armory uh, to help maybe broadcast to the neighborhoods around so the kids don't have to walk to Hickman or Douglas School to, you know, do homework in the parking lot. So we're working on that. Um, you know, we certainly did the listening tour with what, uh, you know, watch the, all the videos and and our staff, you know, they're they're working out of the armory all the time, and they're they're communicating with the guys, you know, the kids there. But right now, during COVID, it's been slow. You know, we're not having three hundred kids a day like we normally do. You know, so uh, but again, we're utilizing, you know, Rodney's group, Race Matters Friends group. We're utilizing various groups. In fact, that leads me to another quick question: is I got an email from Tyree Bindham who's asking kind of the same thing. So what, what, Ooh, I saw that grimace to Rodney. So, but, so, so what, what, you know, I think one of John's biggest challenges is going to be working with everyone in mind. So what, what do you, what are your suggestions on how do we kind of deal with, you know, coming to a multiple groups or a central point of group or, or how we deal with all the other people wanting to, to, kind of do similar things i guess uh that would that would fall into the area of experience in the community uh, it's a lot of people that want to do something the question is can you actually do it that's all that's always the question with anything so i guess it would would uh focus on have they actually done these things in the community do have they actually worked with programs have they actually worked with youth you know do they uh have uh sustainable programs that will work you know what i'm saying and can they actually implement them? Uh, those would be the key things that I look for, especially like when we're when we're going getting people to uh, 
partner with us for Rock the Community and the things that we do out in the community with our community events. I look for organizations that are in line with what we're trying to do. And measurable. Yeah. Mr. Griggs, I have one more question for you. I have. Sorry. Um, have you ever thought about having individuals that work in the community to champion for the youth? Because I will tell you with the youth, it really depends upon who you are sending in certain areas, if that makes sense, as to who they're trusting, because that's a big issue. And a lot of it, the trusting issue, it's generational. So if you had like champion, like for myself, like I know a lot of the youth and a lot of the families. So if you had champions that could go out in a small time frame for you to go out and communicate with the, the youth as to what is it that you like? What is it that you need? Just say maybe three things and then bring that back to you. So when you're doing your program and you know the areas of focusing, because what we've seen in the past is that a lot of programming is there because the Armory, I will say the Armory has reached out and really tried to give those safe spaces, but a lot of individuals wasn't aware that the Armory during the summer hours were open at late hours. I utilized it with my grandchildren. And when I found out, I told others, but sometimes it's not lack of interest, it's lack of knowledge. If that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. As you said, it, they don't, you know, they're certainly not reading newspapers or not looking at flyers posted up, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you're right, getting the word out is very difficult. You know, and that's why we try to do some programs in the park so that we can do some information if they stop by and see it. But again, it's not it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, some of our outreach was limited this last year because we couldn't do any lock ins. We couldn't do any mm -hmm. of those kind of activities. And you're right. You get a you get two or three key people in the neighborhood. You, that's a difference between 10 people or 100 people showing up. You Correct. know, you get the right people. So, Dimitri, we're, we're certainly welcome for any assistance and and champions that can help us with that. And that's why I think, you know, with some of Rodney's programs in the, you know, like Rock Community and Douglas and the mm -hmm. other parks have been have been helpful in terms of reaching out as well. But we certainly are not the experts and know all and help all. So we, we use all that's true. Yeah. I will say, though, what the programs you had years ago, it, it did work. I worked uh, the Sunset Camp. Oh yeah, sure. And the STARS program, I oh, work yeah. those programs and I still have material from those programs. And so I know that we have a lot of kids who have been raised in environments that may not be inter interested in those things, but you just gotta be creative for those kids that that are coming up and thinking it's more cool to go hang out with Big Brother who's doing committing crime, which is not cool, but get them back into the basics of things as and being a kid. So rock the community would be a nice name versus, but kind of have some of the same concept concepts that we did with the sunset camp. Cause those camps worked. I loved working there. I did that for almost 10 years. And, Under Miss Wanda Faye. You're too young, young to be working with that 10 years. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, you're too young to have done that. <laughs> oh, Mr. Mr. Griggs, thank you. I'm 50 years old. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I think Demetria yeah. is right that you know we can help with those things. That uh we we actually with I brought the community events uh for the for years. We've always brought out hundreds and hundreds of youth. Uh and mm -hmm. that's one thing that I, I can say that we uh were able to accomplish uh in Columbia as well. Uh the first year we did it uh with Jeff and them, uh we brought out over twelve hundred people. So we have a really strong uh you know touch with the with the youth. So I think that we can really help bring more capacity to the uh, to the centers and stuff, and get more kids involved in some things over the summer. So we were we're excited to try to you know partner with you guys and help and uh, get more youth involved in a lot more programs. We just need Stephanie to let us have these big events next year. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I want you to be alive in a year. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, thank you. I won't. I won't drag this meeting on any longer. I don't want to be a meeting extender. So. <laughs> okay. Sounds thank good. you, guys. Thank you so much. Good meeting you. All right, and I'll, I'll start sending stuff over to you guys so that you have it, Mr. Glasscock. I'll make sure that I send that information over to you, and uh, I'll also send the uh, our uh, strategic plan over to everyone. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.